Thank you, Mr Speaker, and let me thank the Foreign Secretary for advance sight of his statement and for the tone of his words, with which I wholeheartedly agree. Let me join him in commending the work of the British High Commission in Colombo, who have once again demonstrated that in the very worst of circumstances of British nationals abroad, our consular services offer the very best of support. And I am sure that they will continue to ensure that the families of those British nationals who have so cra- tragically been killed in these attacks will continue to get all the support they need at this time of unbearable shock and sadness. I have also full confidence in what the Foreign Secretary says when it comes to the assistance that this Government is ready to offer to the Sri Lankan authorities, whether it is in relation to security and intelligence or with help for the forensic services, and he has our support and our thanks for that. I know that there are many questions to be asked about who was responsible for these attacks and what could have been done to prevent them, but today, frankly, is not a time for those questions. On this day of national mourning in Sri Lanka, as the first of those killed are buried and the death toll continues to mount, today is simply a time for this House and for this country to stand with the people of Sri Lanka and with those British families and those from around the world who have lost loved ones and express our shared solidarity and grief at the devastation that they have suffered and also to stand in admiration at the way the Sri Lankan people and their government have responded to this attempt to divide them by instead coming together in peace and calling for unity of all communities. And we in the West must do our part too to help Sri Lanka recover from this horror by continuing to visit that beautiful country and showing the terrorists that they will not win. But, Mr Speaker, it is sadly apt that on St George's Day, when we mark both the birth and the death of Shakespeare, we are confronted with this latest example of what what he once called mountainish inhumanity, the unspeakable inhumanity and evil of men who would walk into a group of peaceful Christian worshippers at prayer or happy foreign tourists having breakfast and blow these innocent people up, killing at least 320, including 45 children, including an eight-year-old cousin of our good friend, the member for Hampstead and Kilburn. Dozens are still fighting for their lives in hospital, and hundreds more have received life-changing injuries. And when we ask how anyone's mind could become so warped and depraved as to commit such an act, just as we did about the attack on Muslims in Christchurch last month, on Jews in Pittsburgh last October, we must not make the mistake of blaming religion, because there is no religion on this earth which teaches that the way to salvation is blowing up innocent children or shooting people at prayer. We must also not make the mistake of saying that one act of evil begets another, that somehow this atrocity happened because of the atrocity in Christchurch. I believe that that is an entirely false narrative and one that excuses terrorism, and we should never indulge it. Instead, we should call it out for what it is, an act born of pure, vicious, mind-polluting hatred, perpetuated by sickening, despicable individuals who don't worship God, they worship death, whose only religion is hate, and whose fellow believers in hatred and in death must be wiped from the face of our earth. But in these dark and terrible moments, I do see one shred of light and one piece of definite proof that the narrative which says that evil begets evil, that we reap what we sow, is indeed a false one. And that was the deeply moving statement made by Ben Nicholson, confirming the loss of his wife and his two daughters in the blast at Shangri-La Hotel. I do not think that there is any one of us who could understand what that grief would feel like. And we would all have understood if Mr Nicholson's reaction had been one of anger and hatred towards the people who had destroyed his family. But instead, his response was filled with love. For his wife and his beautiful daughters, he rejected hatred, the hatred that had killed his family, and he responded to them with mountainous humanity. A humanity which no act of evil could corrupt, because 
As Shakespeare also wrote, Mr. Speaker, unkindness may defeat my life, but never, never taint my love. Can I thank the Shadow Foreign Secretary?